Um, today's text is from James is kind of a it's, it's chopped up it, it, you know it, it goes back and forth um, for me to really teach upon it I'm, I'm, I'm going to have Sheila read some the scriptures that that all talk about wisdom and understanding um, what wisdom is and or what James sees as wisdom uh, is. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at, at chapter 3, verses 13, and then 17 and 18, and then she's going to jump down to chapter 4, verses uh, 7 through 8. And Randy, if I could get you to mark your Bible for me, Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. And it'll be a little while before we get to that. But I would like if you would read that for me. 22 and 23? Yeah. Chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Okay, she'll go ahead and, go ahead and read um, 13 okay, so and 17. 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? <clears throat> Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. And yeah. then 17, 17 and 18. And 18. Yeah. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. And then 4, 7 through 8. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Okay. So, um, when we think of someone that is wise, um, does, what comes to mind? Is it someone that talks a lot, or is someone maybe that is a little bit more reserved and, and will, will give you their uh, answer if you ask, but maybe won't tell you without without asking. Uh, is that kind of what the latter, yeah. the latter part? It's kind of the way I've seen it before. You know, someone that knows they're smarter, knows that they're wise, really don't have to impress anyone. Yeah. So they're they're more apt to just kind of step back and evaluate mm -hmm. things and. And look at things. Um, James here is really splitting this scripture up into uh, what is wise or what is wisdom born from above, or, or spiritual wisdom. And then he also talks about um, earthly, uh, what causes um, you know self ambition and, and earthly disorder. So let's take a look at. Um, at verse 13, who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. When, when Sheila read these scriptures, what, what jumps out, um, jumps out or speaks to you when she read these five verses? Is it maybe more of a tone, a, a, a way of life? Uh, to me, I, I... An attitude? Yeah, like the, it uses the word gentleness. Um, and then not having envy and strife and on down through the rest of the verses. Mm -hmm. Almost, it, it really almost is similar to the fruits of the spirit. Um, That's what you're going to read. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So I broke these these words in uh, verse 17 down. Verse 17 says, "But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceful, gentle, 
uh, responsible, full of mercy and good fruits who are um, partially without uh, So what the first one I wanted to look at was pure. Pure is uh, guiltless, mortally pure, without corruption. So if you think of something that is is pure um, uh, in the sense of um, maybe steel or something that's had the impurities taken out of it. There's not very many things that are living on earth that is pure for very long, if you think about it, because corruption comes in. The next word was peaceful, um, disposed to keep peace. Then gentle is appropriate or tolerant, lenient. Reasonable, easy to get along with. They're all they're all saying basically using words to say all the same thing. Uh, full of mercy, ready to extend grace, to give or for to forgive. Uh, Randy, I want you to read the Galatians now that, about good fruits or the spirit uh, of the fruits. When, before I do that, sure. In my version. It says, willing to yield. Willing to yield? Yeah. And okay, I, that's a good. I, I think about that, and it's like, that's kind of a tough one, I think, for a lot of us. It's like, some of us have strong personalities, and being willing to admit that we're wrong, or that somebody else is right, or has a better idea, Sometimes that's a challenge. Sure. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. By contrast, the spirit, the, by contrast, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. So these kind of cross over, and I like the very end of it. There is no law against being kind or being nice, isn't there? I mean, think, you know, think about that. Um, we don't see that much today. Uh, there are there are cases but uh, not so much. The nice guys finish last though. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? The nice guys, <laughs> nice guys, nice guys finish, guys last. finish last. <laughs> That's not law though. <laughs> but those are the ones that go to heaven. Um, so so that we've kind of looked at spiritual wisdom a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at the, um, the earthly wisdom or what does that person look like? That's somebody that thinks they know it all. You said uh, your first example. I think we often get deceived by someone who presents himself as very confident and very chat or very passionate opinionated as wise and that's often not the case and are sometimes those people easy to follow yeah sure yeah. The, the biggest voice is that's <clears throat> where people gravitate towards sometimes the one that continues to talk and talk and talk yeah i think it's because they're usually telling you what you want to hear <laughs> in most cases yeah, yeah. I think you'll see it in the workplace too. Those people might get promoted, and then they might not, and it might not work out. And they're like, "Well, I thought they were the perfect candidate. They act like they know what they're doing. <laughs> maybe they don't. I don't maybe know. they don't. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So maybe that's earthly. So I'm going to read 
the in-betweens that, uh, that Sheila didn't read. I'm going to read 14, 15, and 16. Um, but if you have bitter envy, selfishness, ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For there, for where there is envy and selfishness and ambition, there will be disorder and wickedness of every kind. There's only one word in there that that I really don't well, and it's tied to another word that, that makes it okay, is selfish ambition. Um Ambition is okay as long as it's not selfish ambition. Um, so what do you think about those three? I mean, it's, it's easy for us to live in a time if we watch, you know, or look at Facebook. Um, we see a lot of this every day. And, and then the nice thing about Facebook is the ability to scroll past. Is <laughs> <laughs> to not come into um, contact. Uh, or sometimes we can't help ourselves. Um, but to give our opinion. But still uh, gives us the ability to scroll by. Anything else that jumped out in those those verses? Do you see yourself in some of those verses sometimes? Yeah. I feel like lately I get, um, Brian's my witness, I get riled up about stuff that bothers me that you see. Um, that I disagree with, and so I don't think I handle it well. You know, I feel like if I were wiser, more at peace with, you know, adversity, <laughs> you know, I could, I would be better at letting those things slide off my shoulder, or you know, you know, some things you can't control, so there's no sense of getting angry over. I don't know. Peace yeah. is a big thing in today's world, finding peace somewhere. That's, just that's really it. hard. Well, listening to what Casey just said, I feel, and, and this just pops into my head, so it's kind of the other side of that coin. I feel as Christians, I think it's okay, I think it's even healthy for us to be passionate about what we believe in our relationship with God. And I think it's okay for us to be passionate about not following and, and not just protecting ourselves to not fall temptation to some of those things. So I think about when Jesus was in the temple and threw out the money changers and the people selling stuff there. It showed it was he was passionate about that, and that was okay. So I, I think it's okay for us to have passion in what we believe and stand for. We just don't want to be overboard with it, and we don't want to be judgmental. So it, it, to me, it's kind of a balancing act. Be passionate about what we believe. Be passionate about trying to help others and not falling and giving other pe the people with the bad message, um, not giving them credit or credentials and not believing in it. I totally agree, Randy. I think Casey's been posting about the outsider, how they look at, at us as Christians. So take just what Randy said and, and, and turn that the other way is, is if we really 
we don't stand for anything and we just let others roll over us, um, that sets us as bad of an example of what a Christian is as somebody that maybe is judgmental or goes the other way too far. There's a fine line um, there um, that we have to be careful of, mindful of. But I would rather err on Randy's side because I think as Christians we've sat back for so long um, I think we have lost so much ground um, that it's time for us to stand up for what we believe in and let others know what we believe. Um, and, and one of the things I've hoped is that you know is um what it might be a more positive thing to put out in the world is standing up for what we believe in versus the people that make a big fuss of what they're against mm -hmm. all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying, I mean, there's some things you want to stand up on against, you know, racism or whatever, but, you know, it's, you want to, people to associate with your positive, with the positive, That's what I'm positive saying. Outlook. We need to do it in a positive way. We don't need to sling mud or, yeah. or call people out. We need yeah. to, we need to do it in a positive way. And it can be done in a positive way. <clears throat> but we need to, you know, I think we need to err on, on that side of it. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look at, um. Verses um, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, yeah. Verses, the first three verses in 4, chapter 4. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do you, where do they come from? Do you not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You do something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you've asked wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. So let's talk a little bit about asking and not asking correctly. What's James, what do you think his, his take is here um, in basically verse 3? You ask and you do not receive because you've asked wrongly. That really stood out to me uh, when I read the scripture for the day. Because you always hear in the ask and you shall receive, but you never think, about your motive. Like, what are your deep motives for what you ask, you know? Because um, we don't literally get everything we ask for, you know, and sometimes this is why. I don't know. It's just another part of the equation you don't put a lot of thought in. Like, what are your real motives? Anyway, that one stood out to me. I thought of one, and it's a, it's a Maybe it's not a very good example, but it was the first example that came to my mind. Is to pray for a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, that may sound crazy. I pray for I. But, I but <laughs> if you pray for a gun, that you can go shoot an animal to feed your family, it's not a bad prayer, right? Because yeah. you're helping your family. But if you pray for a gun to go kill your enemy, then you've asked wrongly. I was trying to think of an example that using one, you know, element could go two different ways. And that was the first one come to, to mind, maybe very poorly, but, um, but maybe we pray from a selfish nature um, more so than a, um, a nature to help uh, further the kingdom of God. So I guess let's think about how we pray or what we ask for when we pray. Um, are we praying correctly? The big one that comes to my mind is we want someone who's suffering or, yeah, it, we want them to live. That might not be the best for them. 
that's self. That's us being selfish because we love them and we want them in our lives. And that that's not a bad. I guess it's not a bad thing to pray for. And sometimes you just kind of follow up with Lord if it's in Your will. <laughs> Mom asked us to pray for her to die. Did she? Yeah, and towards the end, because she knew. I mean, she was the. She was smart enough to know she wasn't going to get well. So you you exactly you go from a frame of mind of praying for help as opposed to praying for peace and you know what comes with that and I've done that in, in several cases um, where that prayer shifts from one of, of healing to one of comfort and peace um, not that we're giving up um, but maybe we'll we're praying for is what is best for them, not what is best for us. Uh, that's a that's a better example than the example that that I thought of. Do you think there's anything wrong with that? Praying for peace instead of to get better. Yeah. Honestly, I I, I feel that our prayers are always preferenced preference by God your will not mine so we're praying for God's will to be done but it's okay to ask for specific examples when, when you were talking I mean that was near and dear to my heart the whole thing about guns but I was thinking more about a house it's like God for a lot of people, we got this little house, we got a family that's growing, that's really not working really well, it's causing pressure. So give me this bigger house. On the surface, that's okay, because it makes sense. We can have a better family situation, but it doesn't mean that we need to go all the way from a three bedroom, one bath home up to four bedrooms, five baths, a $450,000 home. We kind of crossed the line there a little bit into wants rather than maybe what's the best thing for us. But I would hope that we all get to a point where I think a lot of people get to a point in their life where they're like, Dad, I'm looking forward to, <coughs> to the time that I no longer have to fight the fights the physical body, the trials and tribulations that we deal with here. It's okay to look forward to passing on and going to heaven and being with Jesus. And hopefully we get to make peace with that before the time comes. Did you all read or watch the video on The Secret when it was out and popular? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of that was based, I think, on attitude. You know, to ask and you will receive to take that to heart mm -hmm. type thing. And so, uh, I still haven't got that $10 million, but <laughs> that 10% was going to church. Yeah. You know? It was a win-win, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wasn't that asking right? You know, give it to me, I give back, you know? <laughs> it's all but, a law know. of attraction. Yeah. Uh, 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 I found that that was interesting. Uh, didn't work quite for me, but still, it was a pop. I liked it for the positive mindset of that whole thing. Interesting. And maybe we need to ask, uh, why do we want the bigger house? Why do we want the bigger money? Yeah, it's not just. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Just be mindful. Maybe you did say that already. Right. Um, it's being mindful of. I don't want this. Thing. I feel like I'm reiterating what you guys already said um, about you could want the same thing, but it could be totally different thing. And I actually liked your example. It's very simple, but it it's a good example of the exact same thing, but what's your motive? Mm -hmm. Maybe instead of, Lord, please give me a, a bigger house, Lord, please give me um, the this, this space or so my family doesn't feel like we're tense around each other and cramped around each other so we can feel more at peace <laughs> you know like what's the bigger ask mm -hmm. 
And you know all this just sounds really good. But when I was praying for better eyesight, I was probably 12, 16 age. Don't didn't have maturity to know that. Mm. But now I'm thinking, let's go back in time and say, God give me good eyesight so when I choose not to wear glasses driving, I won't hurt anybody. So maybe that was God. Is that what we're saying? Change your change your motive? motive. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I would have had it. And maybe when you reevaluate, um, maybe you don't want some of those things you originally asked for. Maybe you realize your motives aren't really that important. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really Garth Brooks song in it. Thank God for running into prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I, I think also some of my reasons this past week, God loves us. We are his children. Now, those of us that have children, we want our children to have some things. We want them to be happy. And even if it's material things that are, you know, nonsensical, God loves us too. He wants us to be happy. He doesn't want us to live without or in poverty. So I think as long as we're asking for God's will, I, I feel like it's okay to it's okay to ask for things. One one thing though also is overall the theme of these verses, talking about envy, strife, temptation, blah blah blah. These are all things from the devil. And I think it just points to the war that's going on in us and in our world. The devil's out there trying to tempt us, trying to destroy us, trying to break our relationship with God. So it's kind of like this is another aspect and another area where we war, and we need to make sure that we're working strong on our own spiritual life so we can not fall to those temptations. We need to recognize it as that. Yeah, yeah, it's serious stuff. You know, I saw something on Facebook, and it, it, sometimes if you look at things, it don't you don't think much about it, but when you think about it, it makes more sense. It, it, the, the thing was, how many, of, how many of you grew up having to share a bathroom? So there was seven of us, and we had one bathroom, and the bathroom was big enough for one person. You couldn't, somebody couldn't be doing their hair and somebody be doing something else in there with one person. So you think of all the things that that teaches. It teaches you to be not messing around, do your business and, and get in and get out, being mindful of others. Uh, and you know, there's so many lessons that it, that, that teaches by just thinking about, well, I had to share a bathroom with, you know, six other people. You know, you really don't, you know, when that carries over into life. So you go to a house, just like Randy said, with four people with four bathrooms. Okay, now nobody has to share. Well, they look at life totally different than when they had to share with six other people. Just something to think about, you know, that, that we don't do as much today as we did maybe our generation when we were kids. Um, I know when we built our house, we had... You know, four people, two baths. You got to share with somebody else. Well, one other person, that's not too bad. Um, when you have to share with six, it's a little bit different. Brian, would you close us? Sure. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the message, Lord. Um, pray to be with each and every one of us as we get through the week and we can really digest your word and uh, really reflect on it and uh, build upon what we've talked about today. Uh, Lord be with Denny who delivers our message. Pray may touch someone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.